coming to you this month uh, in August. To, we're going to go over our next in-service training. It's going to be a four-part series. We're going to shoot a, some videos down here, and we're going to go over responsibilities from uh, the firefighter responsibility from pulling cross lays, uh, one man, two man. Uh, we're going to introduce you, you guys to a new pump chart that we're in the process of developing down here at training. And then we're also going to go over the responsibilities of the fire officer on the scene who is actually making the selection of what hose, what hose length, and how we're going to attack the fire. The initial part of this series we're going to be going over is, is really just the, uh, the the basic pulling of the inch and three-quarter cross leg. We're going to go over the proper one-man and two-man deployments and uh, some of the problems you can prevent uh, with proper line placement. Something we're going to talk about here as far as line management that you, you really don't think about a whole lot is, you know, really how we transitioned as a fire department 10, 10 or so years ago. We transitioned from a 100 PSI automatic fog nozzle and we started carrying the low pressure high volume fog nozzles. Uh, the, the low pressure high volume fog nozzles, they operate at 50 PSI. When we made that transition on nozzles, one thing we didn't think about was the transition on hose. Some of the hose that we purchased in the past is we've had some American uh, standard, we've had some national hose, we've had some pond hose. All these hoses were designed to operate the old automatic fog nozzles at 100 PSI uh, with plenty of back pressure. So the hose manufacturers have addressed some of the kinking issues that we dealt with as a department. A lot of times we dealt with them with over pumping, sending too much pressure down the line and so forth and all that is to, to combat the kinks. So with the new combat ready hose, this manufacturer, they've addressed a, uh, a problem that was seen nation not, nationwide, not just here at the Fort Worth Fire Department. They designed a hose that was to operate at 50 PSI like the, uh, the smooth bores and our current fog nozzles that we operate with. One of the things you get uh, with this hose is that, number one, it doesn't lay down as flat like our, our cross lay loads, our flat loads. Uh, you guys are seeing how they're stacking up a lot taller now. Well, look at these rolls. These are both 50 foot rolls where this combat ready hose stacks up bigger. Uh, it's got a it's not quite as, uh, as flimsy, so when, it, when you fold it over, it's not going to lay down as flat. As well, you can differentiate between the two, as you notice that the new combat ready hose has stripes on it. It can either have two reds, two blues, or a red and One thing I want to caution you guys about with the multiple manufacturers we have out there uh, is you want to keep your cross lace consistent, your hose connections consistent. You don't want to mix the two type of hoses together. If a hose that is more kink resistant is connected to a hose that's more flimsy, It'll cause this hose is more flimsy to, to kink at the uh, at the coupling points. So as Captain Carter mentioned, the big thing we're trying to do here is line management to reduce kinks. So this new hose, as you can see here, is designed for the low pressure, high volume nozzles. So that's definitely going to help, but line management is going to be our best partner in trying to reduce the kinks. Um, a kink in your line can reduce your water by up to 30%. So if we're flowing a 175 GPM big booster, we get a kink, we reduce that by 50 GPMs, which is a huge amount when we're talking GPMs versus BTUs. So to overcome that, we've over pumped our lines. This has actually been advocated by the fire department by training. Problem is when that happens, truth be told from stuff we've seen down here on the training ground and from feedback from crews, people aren't actually opening the nozzle up all the way because there's such a significant nozzle reaction so it feels like this so people don't open the nozzle all the way therefore our GPMs are reduced once again and in the end we haven't accomplished anything better than we did before by having a major kink so line management is where that starts the first step in line management is obviously going to be hose deployment um, unfortunately this picture here is a little extreme but it's not too far away from a lot of stuff we saw when we were doing our one alarm assignment burns down here at training and it's also been witnessed on the fire ground more than once. So for whatever reason, people are just getting in a hurry or they're just not taking the time to really flake their line out well like we were all taught in the past on how to do. And then we have to overcome a lot of kinks just right there at the, at the next of the rig where it's just been spaghettied or it's all kinked up in the front yard and we're fighting that and it's kind of an uphill fight as we're trying to go into these houses and put these fires out. So. Just make sure that we're taking the time to really get that hose flaked out properly. And here we're going to start going just as a refresher on a one person and two person hose deployment off the rig to make sure that we reduce the amount of kinks. Training engine one's on. We've got a two story residential masonry structure. We've got smoke showing from the Bravo side. We'll be pulling 150 foot of inch and three quarter. As a firefighter on the back, there's obviously a few things we need to know up front. 
Uh, first is which line does our officer want us to pull and pull that appropriate line. And then knowing if it's going to be a one or two firefighter deployment makes a difference on obviously which loops we grab and how we do it uh, with the two firefighter being the most efficient. So the single firefighter is not quite as fast or efficient, but if you are doing it as a single firefighter, remember, grab your nozzle. First hand goes through the top loop all the way through and you grab the bottom loop. When you pull this bundle out, be sure you pull it all the way away from the rig before you go right or left just to keep it from hanging up. So again, with the single firefighter deployment, you wanna make sure you pull that first loop towards the hinge side of the door whenever possible. And just make sure you pull it all, all the way out till it pulls it out of your hand. Make sure you've gotten all the hose out of the hose bed. And then once you zigzag back the other way, that'll allow you to be able to come back in from the open side of the door, which is allow you to be able to control the, the line a little better and to control the door. You wanna make sure you go ahead and grab that last coupling closest to the nozzle and bring that up to the door with you. Then that ensures that you have 50 foot right there at the door ready to go in. So with the two firefighter deployment, uh, the first firefighter grabs the nozzle in the top loop that go towards the open side of the door. The second firefighter has a tool, grabs a second loop, goes to the hinge side of the door. That's going to set you up the same way as before, where you have most of your line coming in from the open side of the door, which is going to make it easier for your second firefighter to control the line and, uh, and the door. And now we'll show you the same two firefighter deployment from an aerial view. Whenever possible, just make sure if you if you get down to where you can see down the end of the building, just make sure you take a look to see if you notice anything different, uh, whether you be the second firefighter or the first firefighter. Uh, if you get that opportunity, just don't let that go to waste. So it's always a good idea once you get up to the door to go ahead and take a look in there. Make sure there's not a victim right inside the door and kind of get a look at the layout. Uh. After your engineer gets you water, you need to make sure and go ahead and check your nozzle pattern. And make sure it's set to where you want it. By the time you finish all that, your officer should be done with the 360 meeting back up with you. See here coming in from the open side of the door makes it easier for you to pull line and also makes it easier for your second firefighter to control the door. So that next firefighter, your initial spot is at the door. That's our first pinch point. Once the crew gets in there a ways, you go ahead and bump up. Our driver can then come up and also help feed the hose through the door. Just make sure if you don't have an air pack, you're not in an IDLH environment. So the next firefighter pushes up to our next pinch point. You can see here we're going up the stairs. Uh, jump on the outside of your hose, that way you're not getting pinched off, making it inconvenient plus adding more friction. And have the self-discipline to stay here and help, help hump hose. Our job is to not have everybody crowded on the nozzle. That's not gonna do anybody any good. So just continue to feed them the hose they need. You can feel what they need. Don't feed them too much and push them in. Giving them the right amount of hose is going to allow that officer to do his job of looking at the big picture, looking at the whole environment, and keeping the crew safe. If they're just keeping their head down, pulling their guts out, humping hose, they're not actually doing their job of managing the scene and guiding the nozzlemen. So just make sure we give them the hose they need. That's going to allow us to put these fires out faster, get adequate water by reducing kinks, and keeping all the crews safe. So I know when we talk about line management, everybody automatically assumes about the responsibilities of the firefighter. But in reality, uh, the responsibilities of the driver or engineer, you know, plays just as big a part as the, as well as the firefighter. Uh, so not only do you you worry about opening the uh, the specific valves that's addressing the lines that you guys are using to uh, for fire attack, uh, doing some front yard line management, making sure all the kinks are clear after the uh, second firefighter does his job and starts advancing the line. But you also have to give these guys the, the right amount of pressure. So I know Jake talked a little bit about over pumping our lines earlier. So uh, in order to pump the correct GPM out of our 150 foot inch and three quarter, it calls for 120 pump discharge pressure. Uh, we, we had talked earlier about the pumping of 150 on our uh, pump discharge pressure, which in turn is gonna give you about 80 PSI nozzle pressure at that nozzle. Uh, that's going to give you a slight increase of uh, GPM, but where the, the difference really comes in is a nozzle reaction. 
A manageable nozzle reaction is about 60, but you get about 64 when you flow 175 GPM out of an inch and three quarter. But when you flow that to a pump discharge pressure of 150, that increases your nozzle reaction to almost double. So it's going to be upwards around 100 to 120 uh, pounds of a nozzle reaction, which becomes unmanageable. And what actually happens is the guy on the nozzle, he starts gating that bell down. So you don't get the flows of GPMs of what you originally think you're getting. You do get less kinks, but you don't get the GPM to BTU ratio that you're looking for. Some additional responsibilities for line management that the uh, driver operator is going to have is uh, just being familiar with the lines that you carry on your trucks. That's one of the things that a Fort Worth Fire Department is pretty good at is consistency of the lines we carry. We know we, we carry an inch, 150 foot preloaded inch and three quarter with 50 foot dead load under that. We carry 200 feet of two inch line right behind that one with 50 foot dead load under, dead load under that. Uh, we carry two and a half in our hose beds and then we also carry a blitz fire and uh, a, an assortment of uh, solid stream nozzles. Uh, at training here, we've developed a pump chart that gives you a quick reference of information for that. So what we have there is we, we've got at the very top of our offensive pump chart, we have our big booster inch and three quarter uh, with various links and various pump discharge pressure that coincide with those links. Underneath that, we have our two inch line. Uh, all, once again, various links and various pump discharge pressures. And then we transition down to the two and a half inch line. And keep in mind, this, this pump chart is designated for offensive fire tactics. So we have all those nozzle pressures set for 50 PSI hand pressure. Uh, we also have a, uh, an apartment load that we, we go over. So basically what we have there is we have a 100, 100 foot of inch and three quarter hand line with our yellow 175 GPM nozzles with the various length of two and a half inch hose that that's going to be pre-connected to. When you flip the page, we go to the de some defensive numbers. So we start off on our defensive chart, uh, two and a half inch line with stack tips. We've got the one inch, inch and an eighth, inch and three eighths, and inch and a half nozzles. And uh, we, we change those numbers on that. So any, any flows under 350 GPM, we have those nozzle pressure set at 50. And anything over 350 GPMs, we have the nozzle pressure set at 80. So it automatically makes that different calculation for you. We also throw in there a two and a half inch line with blitz fire and also master stream with our, our tip sizes and flows that you would have with that. Uh, you move on down and then it actually gets into some supply line information, which really doesn't have a whole lot to do with line management, but it has a, a lot to do with this pump chart. It gives you the, uh, the friction losses that you would have in the, in the flows and links on our intake supply lines. We also have some various sizes of some smooth bore and uh, tips and also aerial deck guns. Uh, the next page we have in here is supply line water supply operations and it gives you a, a rule of thumb estimate of how much additional water you have available from a hydrant. Uh, we've got some information in there going over foam eductor, uh, a page in there with high rise pumping information. We also have a page in there going over the different cities that we do mutual and automatic aid with, going over their uh, steamer connections on their hydrants, what size supply lines they use, uh, what kind of hydro stem they operate with, and then also the direction of, of opening and closing those hydrants. The last page we have included in our pump chart is going to be uh, some information going over the, the calf's hand line. So that's pretty much what we have in our pump chart, and it's definitely not all inclusive, but it just gives you a quick reference for the lines that we have on our uh, apparatus here at Fort Worth Fire Department. Uh, one thing I do want you guys to consider is under pumping can be just as negative for you as far as kinks in your line and not getting their, their adequate uh, GPMs to be to use. If you, if you don't give them the pressures that, they're, that they need for these lines, uh, I realize your nozzle reaction will be less, but so will your GPM flows and uh, your kinking issues will compound just because uh, you don't have the, the, the back pressure in those lines to keep them open. So our goal down here at training is not only to, to give you guys the availability of, of accessing these pump charts online or maybe by a link, but we'd also like to get them somehow in a, a sturdy form that was going to be mounted back here by your, your pump panel. That way you guys will always have access you know, to your pump panel or whatever lines you're going to be flowing at any particular time. No matter what your officer decides to choose, whether it be one hand line or even multiple hand lines, you'll have a quick reference available to you back here at your pump panel to uh, be more efficient at your job. As far as line management goes, I know myself, people automatically start thinking about the responsibilities of a firefighter, but in reality, it includes just about every position on the truck. Uh, you know, the officer's gotta make the call 
on what line to, pull, to deploy and what length. Uh, the uh, firefighters have to deploy that line, get the kinks kicked out of it in the front yard and be ready to make entry. The, the engineer, he's got to know what pressures that line requires to get the required nozzle pressure on that line to get the GPMs to flow out that that officer's expecting. Once you start uh, advancing into the structure, people's got to have enough self-discipline if they're not assigned to that nozzle, that they got to be assigned, you know, working those kink points and uh, managing that line to, to keep it opened up and get those flows in there that everybody's expecting to do. So when everybody does their job correctly, that, that gives the officer the opportunity to not only assist in advancing that line, but also to be able to step back, make sure that we don't have a roof fixing to come down on us or make sure everybody's safe on this fire scene.